Howdy folks, this is Jagos, and something that I want to really get out of the way quickly is the fact that gaming has a very large group of consumers slash gamers that make up a very large strata of people all over the world. Now, the thing is, if you've l looked at the other parts of my series, I've talked about publishers, I've talked about marketers, I've talked about developers, and I think one of the things that I was having a lot of trouble with was do I want to talk about journalists or do I want to talk about gamers and all of the types of different gamers out there. The thing about it is that gamers are a very large strata or group of people. And with this large strata, they can sit here and be going in very, very diverse ways. The games that one group likes is not going to be something that another group likes. They sit here and battle about games. They can sit here and get into fights about games. They can be influenced by developers. They can be influenced by publishers. They can be influenced by marketers, journalists, etc., etc., etc. The fact of the matter is that the gamers don't really make up an, a collective group of games or a collective group of people that share a lot of common interests over a large amount of time. If you go into any gaming community out there, you're going to get as many diverse opinions as if you went into the Republican Party or the Democratic Party and tried to sit here and tell a Hillary Clinton supporter that they were a Bernie, Bernie crat or something. The, that's kind of how the dynamics can work. For example, you can have an RPG group that loves Mass Effect, say one, but then they can sit here and hate on Mass Effect 3 while somebody that's more flavored towards EA games is going to have a very biased opinion for Mass Effect games versus say Squaresoft and and when I say Squaresoft I mean anything before the 90s so Final Fantasy 9, Final Fantasy 7, etc, etc, etc. RPG groups can sit here and love JRPGs but not like Western RPGs action-oriented RPGs and CRPGs are all of these different types of groups within various different genre of games that people sit here and form communities around and then talk about, discuss, play, and those types of things. So when we're talking about various different communities, understand gamers are the most diverse group, but they're also the most disconnected from the rest of the gaming industry because at any time you can pick up a game enjoy it critique it sit here and talk about it and then is very very divorced from the reality of what's going on with developers and publishers behind the scenes like if you like will write sim city you may not like maxis nowadays for example because maxis and the sim city that will write created is a far different beast from the ones that started the sim shitty fiasco these are the types of things that you want to look into when you're looking as a gamer into the industry you don't want to sit here and be swayed by a lot of marketing rhetoric which is usually par for the course and when you talk about video games in a certain context and a certain light you really do see different patterns and different styles to different games and these are the types of things that a lot of people don't really value or put a lot of time into. Now when you do it, you could probably sit here and advertise far better for a game if it stands on its own merits. One of the people that I'm very, very impressed with would be Hypebit Hero, who has almost single-handedly convinced me that the Yakuza games are something worth looking into. Now he does a retrospective. And I'll be putting that in the underbar so a lot of people can sit here and judge it on its own merits. But he goes into the detail of how these games have come from very humble backgrounds but told a very amazing story about various different characters that have grown along with the city over time so you can find them to be much more endearing. Now those types of games don't really get a lot of play in their first release but upon continuous releases and various different upgrades and updates they can actually become more endearing over time and become something of a sort of cult classic which is usually the par for the course for certain uh, movies like one of the movies that I recently watched I don't understand at all is Blade Runner 
um, if you ever heard of Mr. Beaton, Mr. Beaton talks about this uh, movie in a very positive light, which is always something to really consider and see. So I'll go ahead and I'll link that as well so other people can sit here and look at that type of deal. The point here is, is to say that gamers don't really connect with each other over a long time. Um, something like Gamergate came as a flash in a pan because the movement eventually died down because there were so many different interests with gamers that they can't keep a collective or a collective base that could sit here and continue to re affect change in any way, shape, or form. I mean, when you're getting conservatives, liberals, socialists, communists, and everybody else on the same page against some kind of corruption, it can only go so far. And then right nowadays, the, if you look at the Gamergate movement, it has become exactly what other people are sitting here claiming that it didn't become. And the reason for it is that there is a very large alt-right that is Sargon of Akkad, Jordan Nolan, these types of new atheist deals where they sit here and they find their boogeyman in feminism instead of actually looking into the ethical journalism, which is really hard for them to do as kind of showmen. So right now, what do they do instead? They make a lot of videos about feminism and sit here and rile up their base with demagoguery. Now, I've made a video on demagoguery before. You can sit here and look at it anytime you want. It's going to stay on this website and stay on my channel. So, I don't want to sit here and get too much into it. But I'm just using that as an example of how gamers can be sidetracked, waylaid, just like in real life. Gaming for the most part, always has context with actual history and there are many parallels that you can look at with regard to other movements. This is something that a lot of people don't really look into. They don't sit here and try to compare and contrast to other happenings and goings on within the world and then they try to isolate Gamergate or they try to isolate gamers and say, well, we're just going to focus on your issues and ignore everything else that's going on around you. So. I want to sit here and say, if you do that, you kind of sit here and divide your power, you divide your base. These are the types of things that a lot of people have to look into when they're looking into the gaming industry. Gamers have diverse opinions. Female gamers are not going to play the same games as all male gamers. But if you have a female gamer that's been playing TF2 since she was three years old, Lord knows there can possibly be a few people, but the fact of the matter is she's going to sit here and be considered one of the guys in the TF2 crowd. Even though sometimes one of the guys gets thirsty, sits here and needs a Sprite because he's going to obey his thirst and say, oh my God, there's a girl on the internet. Oh, Lord have mercy. I've seen that too many times to sit here and not talk about it in some way, shape, or form. But that's just, again, examples. Different gamers have different opinions, different views on many different things. This is why the gaming community cannot get much stronger until those gaming you, uh, gamers can unite about discussing things, trying to be civil to each other, blah, 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 blah. The point is, don't look at to them as part of the gaming industry. Gamers probably have the least amount of work to do with regards to the gaming industry. They can affect change in some capacity, but their ways are rather limited to boycotts of some sort. They're limited to direct action campaigns, and they're, they're usually limited to protests because normally they don't work inside the gaming industry. They don't form around the developers to sit here and fight against publishers. That's one of the biggest reasons why Gamergate eventually failed. The publishers had a lot of power with the journalists. The journalists sit here and s produce the propaganda and they get bribed. So that's something that a lot of people really need to look into and really need to start learning how to talk about. How do these parts of the gaming community and the gaming industry 
interconnect, intertwine, and how do those relationships sit here and be it? Are they affected when you take out one part, when you criticize one part, and see how those people sit here and interact with each other to affect any sort of change. If you are a developer in some way, shape, or form, you have a lot of power and a lot of clout. You can sit here and have a lot more effective change with regards to gamers than say a publisher most publishers have had to sit here and deal with negative pr in some way shape or form ea when it was found out that they had to sit here and they were treating customers poorly most of the developers would sit here talk and get the gamers on their side to sit here and affect ea that's exactly what ea spouse did in 2008 when she sat here and she was talking about the horrible conditions that publishers were treating their own workers to, those conditions changed. Now, as a result, EA also found more, more um, work in Canada, but they can't sit here and get rid of their base. They're tied to the developers in some way, shape, or form. In order to make money off of them, they have to keep them around. Now, there are some publishers that are far more unscrupulous this is something that I've talked about with regard to Atari and I've also talked about it with regard to Activision with Activision you can tell when they sat here and fired Frank Zappella and Frank Ward and Warden Zappella we'll go with that when they fought Warden Zappella they had a very big fight on their hands it was very messy but most gamers would sit here and trust Warden Zappella over Bobby Kotick because they knew that Bobby Kotick would take the quote unquote take the fun out of games. When he said that, he basically made it so that publishers were very, very tone deaf. Now, another publisher that's tone deaf in some way, shape, or form is Valve, but that's neither here nor there. Now, to disclose, I do enjoy Valve games, I don't work for them. The fact of the matter is that I you can take my bias with a grain of salt I have criticized them in the past and I just want to let you know that I do enjoy out of all publishers out there Valve more than others even though I have to criticize them when they do something wrong so the point again I want to sit here and stress this and I'll bring it home with this last 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 talk gamers are not the center of the damn gaming universe so, if you ever want to sit here and look into the gaming industry, start with developers. They have a lot of power. They have a lot of clout. Not a lot of people sit here and recognize that, but you can sit here and look at examples where developers have talked, they've gotten gamers on their side, and they can sit here and do a lot of, lot of damage to publishers that are acting unscrupulously in the AAA industry. I can go into the indie industry and you can sit here and see very same similar dynamics likewise if you want to go into adult games same things apply people have talked about these types of deals and if you want to be a developer you have to know where your power lies your power lies in sitting here and getting gamers on your side if you can do that you can turn into great games such as bastion you can turn to great games such as anything else but you have to know where your power is and what happens in the gaming industry now for my last video I'm going to be talking about journalists and then after that I should be trying to work on a formal video so that way you all can start to see exactly what I'm talking about I'll bring up examples and those are the types of things that I want to try to do at least once a month but I'll sit here and I'll let you all decide the videos but that's going to be in a separate video later. So take care and see you next time.